So good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I got to get my uh, tongue off of my eye teeth. Can't see what I'm saying. It's um, it's a Wednesday afternoon, and today in sunny downtown Binghamton. And for once, I'm not lying. It really is sunny. And Penny is actually 68 degrees out. The trees are all beautiful. So I got to get out and get some pictures. Yeah. Yvonne for um, smart conversations. And my guest today, Penny Sensiaveri is an old friend of mine. Penny, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Penny, but, but you know, I'm just going to read a little bit about her bio because she's so impressive. Well, I have to tell everyone that Penny and I go, I mean, way back to blog her days, Penny. And yes, that's the right. Honest, yeah, the honest truth is when I think about book marketing or any um, insight I need into what's going on in on in the world of book marketing, Penny is one of the first people that I think of. So oh, keep you. that in mind. So Penny C. Sanciaveri, founder and CEO of Author Marketing Experts, Inc., is a best-selling author and internationally recognized book marketing and media relations expert. She's a adjunct professor teaching self-publishing for NYU, and she was named one of the top influencers of 2019 by New York and Metropolitan Magazine. So, I mean, your company is one of the leaders in the publishing industry. That's that's a given. Uh, when people go to your website, Penny, they're going to see the amount of content and advice and insight that you have to share. Um, she's helped some of the most innovative Amazon visibility campaigns. This is something that maybe we could have another another show and talk about because we're not going to do that right now. But she is the author of 18 books, including How to Sell Your Books by the Truckload on Amazon. So, Penny, I just can't wait. I, I, I've been trying to get you on the show for like ever, and you're so busy. So oh, busy. thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Absolutely. And so great to reconnect with you again. I know. I know. The, the getting back together with old friends, especially from our blog post days. We were just yes. talking about that, everyone. So, so Penny, let's get started, though, very quickly and talk a little bit about book clubs, because I saw a, a podcast you did where you talked about book clubs. And I thought, I need to share that with people. So tell us a little bit about book clubs for authors. Well, I love the idea of doing a book clubs. The thing that authors need to consider is that book clubs show up different differently, right? So we have the book club that meets in somebody's living room, for example. We have the book club that meets in bookstores. Mm -hmm. um, there are also book clubs, obviously, that meet in libraries. But yeah. there is another element to this, too. And then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what sort of the criteria is for book clubs. Um, meetups, right? So meetups are good opportunities. There are a lot of book clubs that are on meetup. But there's also an opportunity for you to maybe in a, in a lesser book club kind of format, but to talk about your book to a meetup group too as well, right? So there's a lot of opportunity. And I think that one of the, if I could give authors one piece of advice is they don't spend, authors don't spend enough time digging into their local influencers, which is, you know, part of the book clubs. Not that you can't do this nationally and even internationally, certainly too. You can reach, book, you know, you can go after book clubs all over the country if you want to. Well, that makes sense, especially the local aspect. Mm -hmm. I tell my authors all the time that local, start local. If, if you're launching your book, let's get something out to the local news with a hook that is about something in the news that's relevant and that you've written about and it's in your book so they can talk to you as an author. But I really do love this idea of meetups and local influencers. Um, so the thing is, where are the local influencers and where do they hang out? Well, I mean, to that end, it kind of depends, right? So there's a great app called Nextdoor. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every neighborhood has it. A lot of book clubs look for members on uh, on next door they also look for, you know a lot of book clubs are um they also have a presence on meetup as i mentioned but the your best bet is going to be to contact your local bookstore and local library and find out what book clubs 
meet there and when and who the who the point of contact is because they can usually guide you. But there are also things that you need to prepare for, right? So book clubs are getting pitched all the time because um, <clears throat> one of the stories that I love to talk about is Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood. Wow. So that book, when it first came out, right? I know that's a little bit of a throwback, but when that first when that book first came out, it failed. But what the author knew is she knew that if she could get women talking about mother-daughter relationships, that book would sell. And that is actually the core, obviously, of that book, right? That's the core topic of that book. And so she took it out to book clubs herself. And I want to say this was in the Seattle area. She took it out to book clubs. And from there, it just became this raging success because one book club told another, told another. So your book also has to be right <clears throat> for book club discussion, which is why I throw the meetup piece out. Mm -hmm. Because in some cases, like my my books, I write about book promotion and publicity and Amazon selling on Amazon. My books are not, they're not book club, but I've done some meetup. I've done some great meetup groups with them. So you want to first determine where your book, where the, where your book's best suited to, right? Because not every book is right for every book club. And they're probably fairly, you know, they're probably booked up fairly far in advance depending on how active the book club is. Right, right. And it takes a while to read a book. <clears throat> it's not like you can read something overnight. Um, exactly. So, exactly. so that's really interesting. And I think now that you mentioned um, um, next door, absolutely, and Meetup, but I was also thinking Alignable. Are you familiar with Alignable? Mm -hmm. Alignable is also maybe somewhere um, that, that is, but I like the point that you're making that, that your book isn't necessarily um, the books you write. And sometimes the books I write aren't necessarily book club material. Um, but if you're a fiction author and you find the right book club, wow, wouldn't that be great? But in the end, the author has to do some legwork, right? And you also have to create some collateral pieces, right? So you have to create a book club. So one of the things I would suggest if you're, if you're listening to this or watching this and you think, oh, I really want to do it, create a page on your website for book clubs, right? Or create a link for book clubs or whatever. And a, you want a reader's guide. You're going to want to create a reader's guide for your book. So discussion questions. And this is something that you're going to spend a lot of time on because at first blush, um, it's very difficult for an for authors to do that, to create discussion questions on their own, right? They're usually not in depth enough. Except, so work on it with somebody who you're not necessarily related to, or it's not a neighbor or somebody who knows your book, somebody who knows the industry and, you know, to create something because the discussion questions are also going to drive the interest of the, of the, the book club too. And that's, but they're going to need those. Hmm? I, I, yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're recommending for our authors is, is to have a reader's guide in the back of their book. Yeah. So, so book clubs are one thing, but the other thing that I had seen that you were talking about are um, gift guides. Now we used to do gift guides at blog posts. So, you know, all the bloggers would have stuff to, and people would, would have. So talk to me about gift guides for books, because that was really something that struck me as unique and different. Well, it is. And of course, we're in that time of year where everybody's, you know, our attention is starting. I mean, I think Amazon's moved up there. Cyber Monday day to today. I think it starts actually today or tomorrow, something like that. It's hard to keep track with all these sales, yeah. but everybody is now focused on the holiday market. To some degree, um, you're you're good. You may be a little bit too late for some of the bigger lists, but bloggers continue to fill. They continue to add to gift lists because they're you know they can they can update these blog posts. If you have a book that makes a great gift, and I know that we all think that we have books that make great gifts, like I get it, but there's a couple things about gift guides that you got to know. The book has to align with the blogger. So it's not that dissimilar from actually pitching an influencer or a blogger yeah. for your book. The book has to align with them, right? Obviously they have to be running a gift guide. Now you can go online and you can search you know, gift guides and start doing a search that way to find it. You can also find them on Harrow, which is helpareporterout.com. It's a newsletter. You get lots of gift guide, you know, requests there. And you'll see as we get closer to Christmas, 
that um, more and more gift, you know, we more and more bloggers continually update their gift guides. Um, but also consider too gift guides for the new year, right? Mm -hmm. So new year, new you, right? Come January. If your book doesn't really fit in the December piece of it. So we did a book uh, a couple of years ago, actually, no, last year, that was vegan Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, and wow. we sent this, oh yeah. And it was uh, by Audrey Dunham and she's done a lot in the, the vegan market. We did send this out to gift guides all over the place and they just loved it. And it got lots and lots of play. The other thing to consider too are gift guides. So magazines, any national magazine has a gift, you know, Real Simple does a lot of gift guides. So does Good mm -hmm. Housekeeping. But those magazines, the December issues tend to close, the November, December issues tend to close months in advance. I mean, usually yeah. if I have a 90 day window, I can probably pitch to a magazine, but for December, they're probably closed by July, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but they also have, they do have online portals. Now the online edition, the online um, versions of the magazine Yes, they sometimes do mirror what's in the magazine, but they're also always looking for original content. Yeah. So that's something that you could consider as well, um, you know, to go after, you know, to, to go after, see if you, if you want that national exposure and you feel like, oh, my book would be such a great fit. Try to find somebody that's doing the gift guides or look up the gift guides for Good Housekeeping Online and see who does those updates and see if you can submit a book to them. But gift guides are a great way. And you can even, you know, as authors, I love, I think a good blog post idea too, is also to do a gift guide, right? That sort of is, is around your book, right? So if you wrote a book, for example, on self-care mm -hmm. or whatever, right? You could do a whole blog post on that along with gift ideas, along with your book, and you could create your own, you know, gift list to sort of participate wow. in the community. This is really fantastic. I just wrote in my newsletter a few ideas about um, book marketing for people and I did not include book clubs or or gift guides and now I wish of course that I had although um, the author needs to understand that the work involved is mostly on them for true yes right and my recommendation has been to hire a VA to help you at least do some of the searching and maybe find relevant you know you and the VA decide what the criteria is and then the VA can help find um, specific uh, areas where your book would fit because in the end if the authors are doing it themselves it it you know I I worry that it won't happen or it won't get done so that's why I try to say, you know, look at someone like yourself, like you. So do you do this? If if someone were to hire you, would you help them with gift guides and book clubs yeah. and things like that? Yeah. So we help them. We can help them with gift guides and book clubs and things. Um, and keep in mind that gift guides run year round, right, in magazines. So again, if your book isn't a holiday book, consider Valentine's Day. St. Patrick's Day, um, you know, gift guides for the summer season, things like, you know, I great product recommendations are always in need. And the thing about it is, is when you independently publish your own books, it's a lot harder to get on a list like Real Simple does. They, and all the women's magazines, they have book recommendations, right? It's harder to get on those lists, yeah. right? But it's much easier to get into book recommendations for um, like the gift guide idea around here is a bunch of really great stuff. And by the way, here is this great book that ties right into that. So, so talk a little bit about what a gift guide is for people who don't understand what that means. And so, yeah. And, you know, one other thing that I want to mention before we move into that is um, BuzzFeed. So... Oh. BuzzFeed creates so much content. I think you can probably pitch, they do gift guides on top of gift guides, on top of gift guides, on top oh, of gift wow. guides. It's insane how many they do. Um, and they get a lot of traffic that way. So that's another really good place to pitch yourself to. Um, in terms of what you, no, I'm sorry, Yvonne, remind me, what was your question again? Describe a gift guide. If I were to start a gift guide, what would it look like? 
if I were to be in one, what would it look like? So if you were to start one, so let's say, so I've done gift guides before for writers, right? So I have obviously my book as a recommendation. And then I have things like a door hanger that says, do not disturb writer and, you know, working, mm -hmm. uh, tote bags, you know, things like that, that were, you know, pen, you know, different kind of gifts that pens and pencil sets. I mean, I know that we were on the computer most of the time, but a lot of authors are still taking yes. handwritten notes and ideas and things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are kinds of the kinds of things. So you want to put together a gift guide. If you put together a gift guide, it has to have some kind of a theme. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, gifts under $10 gifts for toddlers, gifts mm -hmm. for new moms, gifts for grandparents, gift, whatever it is, it should have a theme. Otherwise it's just kind of this hodgepodge of, I don't really know who this is for. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And then just pick some, pick some things that you like with links to them and whatnot. It's a really, really fun thing to do. Like I said, we do it. I think we did, we do it pretty much every year. Uh, a gift guide for the reason that bloggers and online media and magazines and whatnot do gift guide is because they get a lot of gift guides, get a lot of attention. We live in a really busy world. Obviously, I don't need to over, I, that doesn't, it can't be overstated. Mm -hmm. Gift guides are a very quick way to get to like, oh my gosh, that's a perfect gift for Yvonne. Or that's something that I was really thinking of getting for my husband or whatever, that's so creative. So most of the time, bloggers are looking and media, particular are looking for gifts that are really creative. So mm -hmm. we worked with an author who wrote a book about eighties trivia, right? So eighties music trivia, which is really fun. Wow. It's a creative idea for a game. It's something easy to carry. So you're not carrying an entire board game around with you just carrying this book. Um, so that's something that we would pitch to, for example, a gift guide for, you know, uh, Gen Xers or boomers, or you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> My throat gets dry when I talk a lot. Uh, me too. Um, so things, so, so when you present your book to the gift guide, um, first off, you're going to have to send them a copy of your book or maybe two, mm -hmm. but you, what you want to do is you want to make sure and, 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 um, um, be very clear on the benefits to their readers, how yes. it fits into their gift guide, right? I saw your gift guide on, for example, you know, nostalgia or whatever. And I thought this eighties trivia book would be so much, you know, right. Right. Would, yeah. You know, it would be a great, great pairing for that too. Yeah. So if I'm, um, looking for gift guides and I'm going to approach someone again, be specific, uh, understand who that you're approaching, understand, look, I mean, the, it's, it's back to the age old thing. Look at what else they've done. Look at what they talk about. Look at maybe their gift mm -hmm. guide from last year. Cause it's probably still on their blog. Mm -hmm. And this is what we did when we were freelance writers, you had to really look at the magazine and, and um, understand what was the content in it. But um, so just again, for people who don't understand, because I can already hear the questions coming, the um, I'm the author, I find the gift guide, I think I have a great angle for it. I write to them, I probably will send the blogger a couple copies of the book. Um, but other than that, the link goes in the gift guide. And the link goes to the sales page wherever I, I put it, correct? Yes, that is correct. Right. It's not yes. that I have to then provide copies of the book to every person who likes no. the guide. Yeah. No. I think yeah. I can see people getting confused about that. Um, so so the gift guides, I love that you said they're all year long because I really didn't think of that. I did say in my newsletter. Um, last week, I said, look, between now and February, you've got ample um, opportunities to get your book out as a gift. Um, mm -hmm. Look at it because there's such, but I didn't think beyond that, though, that makes perfect sense. Well, but the other thing, though, too, for gift guides is that, um, yes, you can absolutely send people to Amazon, right, to get your book, mm -hmm. but you could also offer them 
and this is a little bit more work, but you could also offer them a personalized signed copy, gift wrapped and mailed from your website, right? Yeah. So they will pay a little bit more for it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, some authors are thinking, oh, I don't want to mail anything. That's fine. That's why we have Amazon, right? <laughs> but it's an opportunity because I'll tell you something, people really love autographed books. They make great gifts. And that's exactly what, <clears throat> to your point, exactly. I think that um, I recommend authors keep a number of books. They buy them at the author cost. And then, like you said, they include the shipping in the, in the sale price. And to your point, that makes a lasting impression on someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes a lasting impression. Now, the other thing to consider too, is that if you are, there are a lot of last minute shoppers always. I mean, mm -hmm. we're always told we'll start early, start early, you know, especially now with so many supply, um, supply chain issues, but people mm -hmm. still don't start early. So what's the perfect gift for somebody? It's an ebook, yeah. right? Oh, right. Um, so make sure to emphasize ebook or audiobook whichever, right? Mm -hmm. If you have either or both of those editions, make sure to emphasize that to the gift guide person, especially if the gift guide's going up like on the 20th of December, mm -hmm. right? Um, because sometimes, you know, the other thing to consider too is that during the pandemic, Amazon prioritized everything else over books. Mm -hmm. So book deliveries were very late. That didn't happen last you know, Christmas. So I don't know that we would see that this year, but it's just always good to kind of, if the gift guide is hitting a little bit too close to Christmas, maybe make sure that they know that they can, you know, gift them the audiobook or the ebook if they don't want to, you know, incur well, shipping or whatever. Yeah. A lot of people prefer an audiobook or an ebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the other thing that is just becoming standard today that you have to have an ebook and an audiobook. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I actually had one author um, and she did this in concert with a, so it was a gift guide, but to promote the gift guide, the blogger did a giveaway, right? So she gave away to five winners or something like that, again, to promote the gift guide. And this one author, she got a, a Kindle, right? She gave away five Kindles, which is a little bit of an expensive, obviously wow. give, but she loaded them, she preloaded them all with her latest series, which was kind of a nice, here's your starter, mm -hmm. here's my books. It, they weren't all of her books, so they would still have to go back and get, you okay. know, any other ones that they, you know, that they wanted. So there's a lot of creative things that you can do with bloggers around the whole gift guide idea, but it is a fun, it's a, it's a really, really fun thing to do. Well, and I think um, authors need to understand that the um the idea of doing what you just so what you just described when you offer someone like a kindle with three of your books and you have five more or whatever um this makes that person all the more willing not only to buy the other three that they don't have but to watch out for whatever's coming up so if you're right. writing more books we tell people all the time your second book sells your first book and and you know, so don't hold back. Be, I like to have my authors talk about the book, that, the next book. So here's this book, this is out, but let me tell you about the book that's up and coming. And they, they shy away from it because we know the writing is fluid and could change. And I'm like, that doesn't matter. Nobody cares. If uh -huh. you're telling them about the book, you can even read chapter four and it's not going to be the same when they buy it, which right. is even better. Right, exactly. Exactly. I mean, the whole author marketing, book marketing revolves around understanding the reader, understanding the message, and looking for opportunities to get the word out. Well, and I think that you really hit on something. So understanding the reader, right? Yeah. That is one of the that is one of the biggest mistakes that authors make is that they don't understand their reader. They don't really understand their genre or they've picked a genre that they don't really belong in, uh, that their book doesn't really belong in. Mm -hmm. And I realize that doesn't happen with your authors because you're helping them and you're guiding them. But a lot of folks that we, that, you know, a lot of folks that I talk to that I work with or that we, before we start working with them, we have the conversation about, you know, who did you actually write this book for? Because it, 
it starts there. And that's where if you're not sitting in the right genre on Amazon, if your if your book description is not written for your reader, for your particular reader, right, right, um, then there's a reason that your book is not doing well. Yeah. yeah. You know, because readers aren't going to guess, they're not going to try to figure out, oh, is this book right for me? Is it not right? You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, the the whole Amazon book description is um a study in in trying to make sure so so what I like to do is I like to look at various other books in the same genre how are they being described what what are those authors what are their what are their bestseller ranks so I can say well this book is doing really well let me see how they described it and, and help um, the authors then with the book description for them but tell me a little bit now a little bit off the the promotional aspect and the Amazon um, author profile I like my authors to have their profile in first person. I like them to say that I'm this person, I've done this, here's why I wrote the book or whatever. Is that still a good idea? Yeah, I mean, I think that it it depends a little bit on, to some degree, it depends a little bit on what is in the bio, right? So my bio is not in first person, for example, right? But I talk about the company and the other work that, that we oh, do, right? right? Um, so it depends a little bit. I mean, I think if you've written a fiction book, I think having it first person is really important. But, you know, and I know you have seen this too. I cannot emphasize enough how much, how important it is to make sure that you are not a gray box on Amazon, that you have a good picture, mm -hmm. that you have a, an interesting bio and something that relates to the book, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and use the tools, the some of the free tools that Amazon gives you. Um, Author Central is is so crucial. Yep. I think you know it's funny because I just did a call with Amazon last week. I'm I'm an Amazon Ads advisor now, so every once in a while we do a call mm -hmm. and we talk about. Mostly it's me talking about things that I want them to change on the ads and you know not they they're not going to just take my advice and run with it obviously but i like to give my input right mm -hmm. um and one of the things that they told me is that amazon author central pages get something like two billion hits a year like it's wow. insane how many people go to the author so i mean i know when i find an author i'm like i want to see what else else this author has exactly. done exactly right so you got to spend some time on that um, and you know, it, the other thing though, too, since we're talking about gift guides and holiday mm -hmm. stuff is I've had some authors that will update their book descriptions just to remind the reader, this really makes a great gift. This book makes a great gift, right? Right. Cause um, you, you can go in and update that more than once. Mm -hmm. It's yes. not like you just put it in there and it's there forever. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and I think authors need to understand, like to your point, the reader, that's something we do too. The first thing we ask is, so who did you write this book for? And I agree with you. Nine times out of 10, generally from my perspective, they'll say, well, it's good for everybody. And then I'm just like sitting here in my chair groaning because yes, it's probably good for everybody, but really who is going to buy it and read it? And what, what are they going to get from it? What are they going to achieve? Why are they going to feel good after they read it? Mm -hmm. I think that one of the most important things that authors can spend their time on, and they need to do this early on because it does take a while, is figure out what your log line is, figure out what your elevator pitch is. Mm -hmm. um, James Patterson, and it, in, in a little bit of a different way, James Patterson spends an inordinate amount of time working on the first paragraph of the first chapter of his book mm. because he knows exactly. that if you can't get somebody to read past that first i can tell you from the first paragraph of a book if i'm spot reading a book mm -hmm. for an author that we're considering working with if i'm going to keep reading yeah. right mm -hmm. we make those decisions in the blink of an eye we do the same thing is true for your book description on amazon you've got to have a good elevator pitch and nine times out of ten authors bury the lead Mm -hmm. And we bury the lead because that is, you know, especially if you're writing fiction, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in the book, the whole arc of the story leads up to that one yeah. crucial moment, right? You can't have that in your book description. You cannot have that in your book description. You have got to lead 
You've got to lead with the, you've got to actually start with the end in mind, yeah. not necessarily giving away because authors are like, well, I don't want to give away my ending. Of course you don't. No, but you have to lead. And you know, this will, this exercise will actually benefit you. Whether you're writing your book description on Amazon, if you're pitching the media, if you're pitching a blogger, because that elevator pitch can make yeah. all the difference. And a fun exercise too, is look up movie log lines. Yes. Right? I did this exercise with some authors that I was, when I was, I was working on a coaching session with them. And I said, all right, let's take a look at these movie log lines. And it's interesting to see what the movie leads, what the movie leads with. And the reason they did that is because they know their core audience. Yeah. And that's really where authors need to get to. And an example of this was, so the movie, look, who's talking, right? Mm -hmm. If you look up that log line, not one element of that log line talks about the kid talking, right? Even though that was basically the thrust of the movie. Right. But it wasn't really the thrust. And the thrust of the movie was the romance. And that's what that's the log right. line led with. Because yeah. they knew that if they led with, come listen, for, come for right. 90 minutes and listen to this kid that's talking, <laughs> their core audience would be like, oh, I can just stay home and do that. <laughs> right? So, you know, as authors, you will get you will get into more gift guides. You will get into more, um, you know, uh, read uh, book groups, book clubs, things like that. You'll get more placements if you can really identify one to two sentences, the core of what your book is about. I hear you. Yeah, that's what we work on. We're still, I love the the movie log lines and that's something that, um, that we heard from someone else uh, not, not too long ago. And I think it, it bears repeating because you you want to get to your point you want to get the the interest you want to make sure that 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 first sentence in in your um description on amazon in the in the book it could be the first paragraph but in amazon it's that whole first sentence mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean you should write a run-on sentence it just it means really what is compelling and what is it going to get the person to click the more button so they can see more about the book and then maybe buy the book yeah well this has been really fantastic we're we're kind of at the end here um i mean this has been more than fantastic penny you're always so generous i can't thank you thank enough you. for being here and and perhaps in a few months we can do it, this again and, and talk about anything new and upcoming and whatever in the book marketing world for authors yeah i would love that i had such a great time and thank you so much for inviting me to be on i really appreciate it Excellent. This is Yvonne DeVita for Smart Conversations, and we will have all of Penny's information. Penny, do you want to share, like, where should people find you? Just the website, or is there yeah. somewhere else? So amarketingexpert.com is the website, and you can reach me at info at amarketingexpert.com. And um, yeah, and we have a lot of information on our website. We also do a podcast on book marketing, too, so. Excellent. So that's it for today, folks. We'll see you next time.